in standing. Invite Minister Patterson to the podium to invoke God's presence. Mr. Patterson. Let us pray. Our heavenly God and Father, we thank you today. We give you thanks for your grace and your mercies. Father, for having us here this morning. Father, I invoke your presence upon the ceremony this morning. Let it represent, O oh God, a time when we as people who are molded by you, a people of excellence, Lord, as we come here to give thanks for your provisions. Father, I pray that everything that is said this morning will be fruitful, O oh God, and will be for the benefit of Montserrat. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please be seated. God has got perfect timing. Never early, never late. Takes a little patience and a lot of faith, but it's always worth the wait. Your Excellency the Governor, Mr. Sarah Tucker, and Mr. Tucker, Premier of Montserrat, Honorable Joseph Farrell, Speaker of the Legislative Assembly, Honorable Charlena White, Deputy Premier and Minister of the of Minister of Communications, Works, Labor and the Environment and Energy, sorry, <laughs> Dr. the Honorable Samuel Joseph, Minister of Education, Honorable Charles Kernan, Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Cranston Buffon, Parliamentary Secretary, Veronica Dorset Hector, Opposition Leader, Honorable Paul Lewis, Opposition Member, Honorable David Osborne, Opposition Member, Honorable Claude Hogan, Attorney General, Honorable Cherie Jemot Rodney, Financial Secretary, Honorable Lindona Lambert, Deputy Governor, the Honorable Lindell Simpson, Representatives of the Monshat Christian Council, Your Excellency Ambassador Margaret Zata Wasiluska, Head of Delegation of the European Union to Barbados, Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, and CARICOM, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Communications, Works, Labor and Energy, Mr. Colin Fergus, Director of the Public Works Department, Mr. Rawson Patterson, Mr. Isaac Solomon, Vice President of Operations, Caribbean Development Bank, Mr. Alba Smirilio, Smirilio, I'm Paul, apologies, FCD Development Officer, Mr. Dion Weeks, Project Manager, Mr. Harold Westerman, representative of the Stantec Consulting International Company, Mr. Richard Starkley, representative of the Meridian Construction Company, permanent secretaries, heads of departments, and managers of statutory bodies, specially invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the media, good morning, and welcome to the Montserrat Port Development Project groundbreaking ceremony. The gestation period has been significant. However, the fact that we're here today taking these next steps is testament to the commitment of the various stakeholders over the many years to deliver this project, which will be one of the largest infrastructure projects in Montserrat in recent times. We are all confident that the construction of this modern facility and safe harbor will significantly improve the connectivity enable greater efficiency of port operations, increase resilience, and serve as a catalyst for economic growth. The project has been funded through the Caribbean Development Bank in cooperation with the United Kingdom Caribbean Infrastructure Partnership Fund, UKCIF, with counterpart financing provided by the government of Montserrat and the European Development Fund, EDF9. The esteemed presentations that will follow will certainly highlight the project details, what we'll be getting, the costs, the benefits that will accrue against the backdrop of being responsible stewards of our environment, while at the same time being inclusive in its approach to gender. We now move to the presentations. Mr. Isaac Solomon, Vice President Operations, Caribbean Development Bank, has been engaged with the Caribbean Development Bank since March of 2021. In the prior 15 years, 
He held senior positions at RBC, RBTT, namely area manager and ultimately managing director of the Eastern Caribbean. Mr. Solomon, whose personal mantra for higher purpose, service to man, to humanity, is clearly aligned with the mission of the Caribbean Development Bank of reducing poverty and transforming lives through sustainable, resilient, and inclusive development. Certainly no stranger to our shores. Warmly welcome Mr. Solomon to the podium. Mr. Solomon. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of the President of the, and Management and Staff of the Caribbean Development Bank, including my colleagues who are here this morning, I wish to convey warmest greetings to the government and people of Montserrat. Today, we celebrate an important milestone for the Montserrat Port Development Project, groundbreaking ceremony for the construction of physical infrastructure, including a new pair, a mooring dolphin to allow the berthing of ships larger, larger than the new pair, and a causeway with coastal protection. In this global environment, countries must be able to trade efficiently in order to prosper. The Montserrat Port Development Project will be one of the largest projects implemented in Montserrat in recent times, as Joseph just said, and on completion, it is expected that this new facility will provide employment opportunities and help to improve productivity and the business environment here in Montserrat. Over the long term, the provision of reliable access and connectivity to the island for the movement of people, goods, and services should increase its trading potential, which would ultimately have a positive impact on growth. Improve efficiency, effectiveness, and resilience of the port facilities to provide a safe harbor and accessibility to all users is the expected outcome of this intervention. The resources used to finance the Montserrat Port Development Project are provided by CDB and the government of Montserrat, the latter utilizing European Union resources. CDB is currently provided 14.4 million pounds sterling in grant financing through the UK CIF for the project, which is provided through the United Kingdom Caribbean Infrastructure Partnership Fund, a 330 million pounds sterling facility financed by the government of the United Kingdom through its Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. CDB Strategic Plan Update 2022 to 2024 recognizes the positive relationship between infrastructure, economic growth, and poverty reduction. Projects such as this one must be anchored within CDB's strategic objectives of building social resilience, building economic resilience, and building environmental resilience. Similarly, this project is also consistent with the UKSIF strategic objectives of promoting economic transformation, climate resilience, and positive social impacts, including gender equality and accessibility. The Montreal Port Development Project is designed to meet all these requirements and dovetails with the government of Montserrat's ongoing efforts to restore access and connectivity to the island. A key factor in the success of any capital project, especially a project such as this, which will impact every community on Montserrat, is the consideration of climate resilience and the engagement of stakeholders. A climate vulnerability assessment has been prepared and a detailed environmental and social impact assessment, ESIA, complete with full stakeholder consultation has been drafted. The ESIA will be approved by the government of Montserrat in tandem with the final designs for the project. The ESIA has also produced a number of distinct products which provide a roadmap for the environmental and social safeguards during project implementation, 
including an environmental and social management plan, and a social and gender action plan, and a stakeholder engagement plan, inclusive of a grievance redress mechanism. CDB has long been and remains a partner to the government and people of Montserrat, as this strive to achieve their development objectives. The bank's commitment to port development on the island dates back to the late 1980s after Hurricane Hugo destroyed the only port, port facility in Plymouth in 1989. CDB provided the financing for a new modern port facility in Plymouth by the early 1990s, which to this day continues to serve as the primary port for the export of sand and aggregate. More recently, CDB provided 13.4 million US dollars in concessional funding for the Montserrat Second Power Project and guided by Montserrat's country, country policy framework developed in 2018, CDB's Basic Needs Trust Fund country project impl implemented five sub-projects with a total budgetary allocation of approximately 640,000 US dollars. Of the five, two were in education and human resource development, one in water and sanitation, and two in access and drainage. The BNTF program is now in its 10th cycle with an allocation of approximately 607,000 US dollars under which an additional three sub-projects have been identified. Our team is on island this week to appraise additional UKSIF grant financing to ensure that enough resources are allocated for the successful completion of the Montserrat Port Development Project. The effective implementation of the project will require the close cooperation of many parties. A project steering committee has been established, which is expected to monitor and provide guidance, but the main responsibility for implementation rests with the project management team, which through the additional grant will be strengthened in areas such as contract management, stakeholder management, and financial administration, among others. I would like to place on record our gratitude to the staff of the Ministry of Communication, Works, Energy, and Labor, and other government of Montserrat officials for their efforts in helping to organize this groundbreaking ceremony and the additional grant appraisal mission. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to participate in these proceedings and we look forward to the successful completion of the Monster at Port Development Project. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Solomon, for your brief remarks. Mr. Richard Startley. Director of the Meridian Construction Company, a company who are Caribbean experts in marine works, complex marine and land-based piling, structural steel erections, construction and industrial and infrastructure projects. The Meridian Construction Company is committed to providing the highest quality civil and marine engineering and construction services in the region. The company name is synonymous with innovation. They credit their success to project supervision and the ability to develop the most cost-effective solutions, which has earned the company an excellent reputation for quality and, and client satisfaction. Kindly mis welcome Mr. Startley to the podium. Good morning, good morning everybody. Meridian is honored to have been selected to undertake this momentous infrastructure project by the government of Montserrat. This project represents for us a huge opportunity to showcase our skills in marine construction as a Caribbean based company undertaking one of the foremost projects in the islands. This project 
has many technical issues, including construction in heavy seas and swells in the winter months, its close proximity to ecologically sensitive sites, and the task of designing the port to withstand all nature's forces for many years to come. The challenges and others will be tackled head on in close collaboration with your government and also the experts that have been assembled to enable the success of this port expansion. In 18 months from now, under the cliffs out here, we'll be looking at an imposing 130 meter long concrete pier with a mooring dolphin off its end, capable of berthing small cruise ships, small container ships, and inter-island cargo vessels. These boats must be able to come alongside and berth in any weather so that trade and tourist opportunities are carried on regardless. To give you an idea how we envisage the work, initially there'll be a design phase of three to four months where our engineers will make all the structural calculations liaising closely with your engineers and departments to identify the exact materials and methodology of the dock structures. During this time, you will see a barge and drilling platform loaded with geotechnical equipment and geotechnical engineers who will be probing the seabed in the location of the new pier structure. Following this, we will start preparing Piper's Pond for our site huts, uh, our offices, and construction equipment will be loaded from a temporary dock in Piper's Pond. After about four months, we'll start the real construction work, and you'll see barges and cranes at the port. At that time, we'll bring in a small number of specialist workers. We'll have crane operators, riggers, and other specialist um, workmen. But you must know that all other workmen that we'll be hiring will be locally. We'll be hiring carpenters, masons, steel fixers from the island. And the same applies to equipment. We'll be bringing heavy cranes, piling hammers, and barges, but we'll hire all the other plant locally from the local population. In closing, Meridian's very proud to be from the Caribbean. We view this project as a positive opportunity of investing our knowledge and experience in Montserrat, and also forging new and collaborative friendships in this beautiful and welcoming country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Starkley. I think the local um, population will be quite happy to hear about the employment opportunities uh, that will be provided uh, for steel fixers and such like. We all look forward to uh, the injection in the, the local economy. Mr. Joseph Farrell, Premier and Minister of Finance and Economic Management with responsibility for local government, immigration, information, communication, foreign affairs, culture, tourism, and trade, was appointed Premier of Munsrat on the 19th of November, 2019. He has been a member of the Munsrat Legislative Assembly for approximately 15 years, having served as legislator from 2006 to 2009 as a Minister of Agriculture, Lands, Housing, and the Environment, and from 2009 to 2014 as leader of the opposition. As leader of government, Premier Farrell continues to strive towards a fuller measure of economic recovery and self-government for the people of Montserrat. Premier Farrell. Good morning, everyone, and allow me to adopt the protocol that has been established so ably by the chair. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this auspicious occasion in the history of our beautiful island, Montserrat. This is a long-awaited day for the future development of our country. And I'm extremely happy to be here with you today to officially break ground on a new port, a new fully funded 
support. Montserrat has witnessed a number of setbacks due to natural disasters, two critical ones being Hurricane Hugo in 1989, and just six years after, in 1995, the eruption of the Silver Hills volcano. The latter, which caused the migration of thousands of islanders, as well as relocation of businesses and people to the northern section of the island. With the relocation came the construction of a little port in Little Bay to include the temporary jetty at this very location. More than 25 years since the volcanic crisis and our evacuation in Plymouth, we have yet to establish a fit-for-purpose seaport with modern capabilities for our crews and cargo operations. Today, this will change. And I am proud that my government can make good on its commitment that we will construct a port. Today is also the first step towards enabling meaningful landside development, the creation of a new, of a new center of commerce and social exchange in Little Bay, and the attraction of new opportunities for tourism, trade, and investment. This April, the government of Montserrat participated in Sea Trade Crews Global Convention in Miami, a trade convention which saw thousands of cruise, ex cruise executives, decision makers, and suppliers who gathered to network and educate about cruising. This year, the conference celebrated resilience, which beckons collaboration across sectors for safer and more innovative cruising experiences. We took the opportunity to showcase Montserrat and provide updates on the new port development. This came as a welcome news to the executives who are also looking to add Montserrat to their future cruising and yachting itineraries. This project is, part, is, part, is anticipated to boost our current economy based on the many direct and indirect benefits it will provide to the people of Montserrat during and after its construction. We expect to see a rise in the level of employment within the private sector, more investment opportunities, access to wider market, a decrease in transportation costs over time, and access to a range of port-related services. A port provides a sense of security to an island, and one of the key priorities of my government was to ensure this security for our residents during our term. I would like to recognize and thank the funding partners, the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office and agencies without whom this project would simply be not possible. Significant financing, investment, and support for the UK's Caribbean Investment Fund through the CDB. Just over $90 million. Alongside the CPREG program, this capital injection of funding demonstrates a lasting partnership with our UK partners and Bunstrat's development. This funding is administered through the Caribbean Development Bank, and I must also underline our sincere thanks to the bank for the significant efforts and, the, and all the colleagues of CDB who over these many months have worked with us so that we can see this day come to fusion. We, give, we thank you very much. I'm also delighted to confirm that this project benefits from more than $24 million of funding allocated from the European Union's EDF program. The funds from EDF 10 has allowed us for some of the earliest stages of the landside development and to occur on the EDF 11 and to continue through this phase. May I say the EU has been a constant friend of Montserrat, targeting much needed support in critical development areas. And however the relationship with the EU and OCTs developed in the future let today stand as a symbol of his power and his legacy.
I would also like to acknowledge the significant efforts of the government of Montserrat team at all levels for steering this project toward this happy occasion. The project team led by Mr. Dean Weeks, with support from the Permanent Secretary and other technicians within the Ministry of Communication, Works, Labor and Energy, and reinforced by the technical consultant Stantec, has overcome many challenges, hurdles and processes to reach this stage. And these significant efforts are acknowledged today. I also note the support of the Ministry of Finance team, particularly the Procurement Department and the Program Management Office, in providing valuable expertise and support throughout the project life cycle. And this will continue throughout the project. It is my pleasure to welcome Meridian's partnership today with the government of Montserrat. We look forward to a fruitful working relationship in delivering this port project. On behalf of my people and the government of Montserrat, we say thank you, thank you, thank you for having the faith and enjoying with us to getting to this point. Without these long discussions and planning, we would not have been able to reach this pivotal stage. But most of all, thank you to the residents and citizens of Montserrat for your patience, your endurance, for bearing with us and for believe, believing in us, for trusting us when we said to you that we will construct this port. Without your vision, your criticisms, and your determination, this would not have been a reality. Our commitment to you before we were elected was to ensure that the necessary infrastructure is put in place. And as you can see, we continue to, pa to path for, for fruitful and to fulfill our promises. With those words, I conclude by saying I look forward to the days, weeks, and months ahead as we break ground, as musicians are employed, as businesses are increased, as we mobilize together, we expect to see a significant contribution to the monster economy. Let us work together. Together we can. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Premier. I think the local craftsmen would be heartened to hear that while we start here today, a groundbreaking ceremony for a facility that is going to be operational in 18 to 20 months, that meetings and plans are already ongoing, engaging with cruise lines to ensure that we have increased visitors. Thank you very much, Honorable Premier. Your Excellency, the Governor, Mrs. Sarah Georgina Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I dug that one out. <laughs> Took up her appointment during March of 2022. Prior to her posting here, she served in various capacities from 2011 in what was then the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, culminating in a previous post as Director of Strategy in the Virgin Islands. Kindly welcome Governor Tucker to the podium. So I can give a shout out for the carpenters who made my box. <laughs> Good morning. I'd like to adopt the protocol already established so beautifully by Mr. Joseph Vergara and impressively. The Premier and I were very grateful that we didn't have to do that, so thank you. First of all, I'd like to join others by saying how pleased I am to be part of this groundbreaking ceremony for the Montserrat Port Development Project. If you forgive the analogy, we have had to navigate some challenging and at times choppy waters since this project was first launched in 2019. And I know it's been a labor of love and a bit of pain for all concerned to get to today. I join in commending the Office of the Premier, the, Minister of, the Ministry of Communication, Works, Labor and Energy, and the PMO and Commercial Team for their hard work and collaboration with the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office and the Caribbean Development Bank in achieving this key milestone for Montserrat. The UK government understands how pivotal the Little Bay Port project development is for Montserrat's revitalization 
is economic development and sustainability. And as governor, I was so pleased to receive confirmation that the UK was able to make a tangible demonstration of its continued support for our wonderful island by increasing the funding from this project from £14 million to over £28 million. This investment in the port infrastructure will provide a safe, secure, modern, and I hope green facility for the island and to improve access for all marine traffic, be that cargo vessels or cruise ships, and dare I mention passenger ferries. It will boost Montserrat's ability to connect to the region and to the rest of the world. This port will provide a vital pillar of infrastructure to underpin our economic growth, enabling development in tourism, trade, and accessibility. And that's accessibility in its broadest sense, ensuring as a modern faculty, Montserrat can meet the needs of all travellers, providing ramps, wide doorways, and continuing our development as an inclusive society. We hope and we've heard how this new port will bring new job opportunities and enable new investment as part of the ongoing sustainable development of Montserrat. And I hope, Richard, that we will also give an opportunity to some of our youngsters to learn alongside the team as they develop the port. And I know the FCO team, the FCGO team uh, in Barbados and in the UK would want to thank the government of Montserrat for its consultative and participatory approach and its commitment to continue with strong community engagement throughout project design and implementation. It's really important that we don't go from today to groundbreaking, and Mr. Ogara, we said 18 months, not 20 months, <laughs> for the new port. You know, it's really important we have that dialogue as, as we continue. And we welcome the focus on climate resilience in the project, which I know Meridian will develop further, so that the infrastructure can withstand climate shocks and is environmentally sound and sustainable. The UK will continue to stand by Montserrat in supporting its resilient growth and key development opportunities and priorities to improve the lives of our people. The FCGO and my office as the Governor's Office look forward to our continued collaboration with partners in government, as well as our colleagues at CDB, to ensure the smooth and efficient delivery of this transformational project. And I personally look forward to watching, and Richard, you may or may not like to hear this, but the ongoing development every single day from my office window, as we noted yesterday. Um, so if there are any challenges, then I'll be the first to spot them and the first to shout. Um, but I won't say too much more, because the feature address today is going to be done by the Dr. Honourable Sammy Joseph, and uh, I wouldn't want to steal his thunder. So I thank you all very much for having me here today. It's a real honor, and it's very exciting for Montserrat, and I look forward to that port in 18 months' time. And it's going to be a bit choppy on the way. Yeah? I, I feel for Meridian, because it's never easy to do a big infrastructure project like this. People are going to moan. It's going to be dusty. It's going to be noisy. It's going to be challenging. But we have to keep our eyes on the prize, which is having that, that terminal at the end and all the benefits that will bring. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, H.E. I appreciate the correction, but I think I can safely duck that bullet and the, <laughs> the contractor will take that one. Uh, so 18 months, the lines have been drawn. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, the, uh, so 18 months from now, we'll have uh, a ribbon cutting ceremony. Looking forward to it. Honorable Samuel Joseph, the Minister of Communications, Works, Labor and Energy, was educated at the University of the West Indies and Baylor University in Texas. Dr. Joseph holds a PhD in physics, a master's in computational physics, and a first class honors in mathematics. Believing that Munstrations could leverage their ICT skills to drop business from the global community, Dr. Joseph and his colleagues established Munstrations first software company, which has produced various apps and software currently in use in both the public and private sectors today. Elected to parliament in 2017, Dr. Joseph has invested significant energies and experience in ensuring that Munsrat, no part of the global world connected through technology, sculpts its future through its ability to exploit its geothermal energy and information communication technologies. Welcome, the Honorable Dr. Samuel Joseph to the podium.
Good morning. I would like to adopt the protocol as this was ably established by Mr. Joseph Ogaro here. And to, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this based on the oath that we take to chastise the, the governor. Because we had an agreement that she was going to say everything and I didn't have to come up here and do anything. And she promised me that she was going to throw it back on me. And I guess she kept her promise, so I guess I shouldn't chastise her. <laughs> Possibilities and connections. In the program line up in front of me, I see I have Monswat Port Development Project Groundbreaking Ceremony. But I want to pause this to today that we're not here for the Monswat Port Development Project, but for the Montserrat Project, full stop. And this project was started a couple years back by some of the people that you see on the wall in front here by the most excellent Honorable William H. Bramble and the most excellent Honorable Robert William Griffith. And one may ask, I may ask, what is this Montserrat project? Because I remember in this very, same, this very same room, this very same ceremony, there was a speaker that came on this podium and he made the comment that Montserrat is like a village in the UK. And that comment might seem trivial, but that comment has meaning. And that comment based on my interactions with various international organizations, certain local people and certain representatives, has a meaning. And it has a meaning that there's a perception that Montserrat is only a village, and Montserrat is only 4,000 people, and Montserrat is what you see now. And I'm here to say that that is not the Montserrat project that was started by the Honorable, the most excellent Honorable William Bramble, and the most excellent Robert William Griffith. The Montserrat project is an idea, is an idea that says that we, the people of this island, have the capability of charting our future, and we, the people of the island, are the ones to determine how we see Montserrat and where we want to go, and we must take steps to ensure that we get there. And these steps must be taken with the assistance of the local population and with our international partners and with our administrative power. But it is the people of Montserrat who are responsible for the development of Montserrat and to chart the course in wherever choppy waters of where we want to go. So we have possibilities and connections. So when we talk about the port development project, we should not see a 130 meter port. We should see a facility that would allow cruise ships to come here and to give businesses to Montserrat. We should not see a rural ramp, but we should see a spot where our local businesses should export and the growing of our private businesses here are sending things out of Montserrat and containers are not coming in full and leaving empty. So when we see a road go down the side out there, we should not be seeing just a road going out there, but the path in which people from yachts and tourists are coming into Montserrat to go to the facilities that will be built, that will be built along the coast along here with restaurants, places to shop, entertainment places, volcano interpretation centers, and a fully developed Little Bay Town. That is the Montserrat that we are building and not what you see currently. What we see currently is what is here, but we have a vision of where we are going. And this project, it's a huge project, the biggest that has been done for the past 26 years, but it's just a step. It is just a step. And I know a lot of people have given thanks to the funding partners. But I'm coming to that later. It is just a step of where Montserrat and the people of Montserrat dream to go and expect to go. And we, we are going to do our part the Caribbean community, to Meridian CDB will do their part. The EU and our administrative powers and others will do their part, and the local elected officials and the opposition and all our representatives and the people of Montserrat and the civil service of Montserrat will do our part to get us where we want to go. Because we cannot just see a port that is being built, but the possibilities that will come from the construction of this project, not only from that, what was spoken about, all the construction and jobs that will be available during the 18 month, Mr. Starkley, during the 18 month construction phase, but what will come after, it is what we are building for, for a future where we see Montserrat in a far better place. Because Montserrat will import basically everything, and there's doom and gloom around the world right now, and we have a negative, a negative attitude. And it appears that we have also imported that, but we don't need to buy everything that people is selling. So despite, despite the gloom and doom that's happening outside the world, we have to have a positive attitude in Montserrat that we know where we are going, and we are going to get there because the steps are being put in place to go there. And not only are the steps being put in place to go there, but we have the ability to get there, each of us individually. 
We love to say government are not taking away the blame for Moscow. We have things to do and we can do better. I'm not denying that. But the future of Montserrat not only rests with the four ministers, it not only rests with the members of cabinet, it not only rests with the members of parliament, but it rests with the people of Montserrat and the interaction with the international community. And it only by working together we'll be able to get where we want to go, which was the project started by the honorable gentleman that I've mentioned before, the Montserrat project. And the second part of my statement at the beginning, possibilities and connections. We live in a globally connected world. And if one looks at the political landscape of the world right now, a lot of countries are moving internally and very nationalistic. And that is not going to work. If we look at certain events that has taken place, the global pandemic, COVID, if one country is fixed their COVID problem, whatever that means, and it still exists in other parts of the world and there's travel, it is going to come back to you. So unless the global community as a whole do all, all the necessary health checks and all the necessary assistance from the global north to the poorer global south, the problem will persist and humanity itself and all human beings will be affected. So it is incumbent upon those that have the ability, the G7 and G8s, this minus one, depending on how we look at it. But it is their responsibility to ensure that the entire world is on an equal level. If inequality spreads, you're going to have migrations. And if you look at a lot of the conversation that's happening, yes, in the UK and other places, there's an anti-immigration and other movements. But if we do not fix the poverty issues in the global south, these issues are going to persist. So it is incumbent upon the EUs and the Canadas and the US and the UKs, et cetera, to ensure that the necessary things are in place for the poorer and upcoming developed world get to the stage where they want to go. We also look at climate change. That, again, is a global phenomenon. If certain countries fix it and certain countries still pump the carbon dioxide, it is still a problem for the entire global community. So despite that certain countries may have the may make the comment that Montserrat is a global village, a, not a global village, a village, and we, the perception that we may not require certain things to a certain standard, unless we fix the issues that happens in the Caribbean, the issues that happen in Africa and the other places, there is going to be a global issue. So yes, funding has been given by the UKCF and we thank them. Yes, funding has been given to the EU and we thank them and other organizations but there is a responsibility by the global community to ensure that development in our developed countries and the small island development states take place and that responsibility will always be there, not only as a moral responsibility for historical reasons, but also for our selfish and personal responsibility. Because if the problems in the rest of the world are not fixed, the problems are going to be imported back into these countries. So for today, we're here again for the Montserrat Port Development Groundbreaking Ceremony, and I'm positing this is just a continuation of the Montserrat project. And so I would like to close by the comment I started, there are possibilities and there are connections and they must all work together to get to the spot where we want to go. So thank you to all of those who have worked very hard and I know a comprehensive thank you will be given later, but worked very hard to get us to where we are now and when normally when these thank yous are given, we forget the general public itself because we are doing these things not for the glory and the pictures of taking the, the cutting the ribbons, but to actually do something for the public through our democratic system that places us into a position to do things for them. I want to thank them for their patience because this has been with, a, with whatever similar metaphor you want to use, a choppy or long windy road to get where we are now but we're eventually now starting the hard part of the journey. There's a tendency to think that when the project starts, it's now the easy, the hard part has been finished and the easy part is coming and even when the ribbon is cut. But when the ribbon is cut is when the hard part starts to actually get the possibilities from the investment that was made and it's something that we have to work hard on and I know the Honorable Premier and his trade team is working hard on those possibilities and I'm saying publicly so that we get to it. <laughs> So again, we are part of the Montserrat project and I would like to thank everyone for coming here and I'm looking forward to do this groundbreaking ceremony but it's a port in the water so I'm not sure how that is going to work since I didn't walk in my swimsuit. But <laughs> again, I would like to thank everybody and I wish the project a huge success. Thank you.
Thank you, Deputy Premier. I think after today, for whatever reason, um, 18 months is probably going to be trending on social media. Uh, to the chagrin of the, um, the contractors, but to our all, well, to our benefit. The, le let me just uh, make some, some brief comments though on the, the feature address that was provided by um, the Deputy Premier, um, recognizing um, the fact that he outlined uh, the Montrack project as being uh, the, the larger vision uh, something that we must all buy into uh, as Montrachians and uh, people who live here. Thank you, Deputy Premier. Right, so we move into the actual groundbreaking part of the ceremony, which will take place um, just outside. I'm, I'm being directed, we, we leave through these doors? Okay, uh, should everybody accompany the, the groundbreaking team or? Yes, we are all welcome, lovely, right. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, who's this, who's this got in the. Right. So, who's. Right. So, please just file out uh, to my left. The, the site will be blessed by the religious minister, Mr. Rawlson Patterson, and the groundbreaking would actually be undertaken by the deputy premier and Mr. Richard Starkley of Meridian Construction Company. Heavenly, F Heavenly Father, today we thank you for your grace and your mercies. And Father, I pray today as we break ground for our port, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, upon this ground, upon this rock, upon this seabed, O oh God, we shall build this port. And Father, I pray that, that no powers, O oh God, shall prevail against it, whether spiritually or physically. Father, I pray, O oh God, that it will stand against every challenge in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much. We can proceed back inside for the vote of thanks. <laughs> sure, sure.
Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We now welcome Mr. Colin Fergus to the podium. He's got the, the task of thanking everyone and hopefully not omitting anybody. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fergus. Good morning, everyone. Chairman, I'm not promising not to omit anybody, but I will try. Permit me to respect and acknowledge the greeting protocol already adopted. It has been such an honor to be part of today's groundbreaking. The journey to this day has included many challenges, so I wish to thank the Lord God for guiding us here. On behalf of the Ministry of Communication, Works, Labor, and Energy, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the esteemed guests and speakers here today, Her Excellency Sarah Tucker, Premier the Honorable Joseph Taylor Farrell, Mr. Isaac Solomon, Vice President Dent Operations at CDB, Mr. Richard Starkey, Meridian Construction, Vice President and Director of Operations, along with our host minister, Dr. the Honorable Samuel Joseph. Thank you. Mr. Isaac Solomon, thank you for reaffirming the CDB's commitment to partnering with Montserrat and for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to be with us today as we mark this milestone in the project. We wish to thank our design and build contractor, Meridian Construction Company Limited, represented by Mr. Richard Starkey. As we are at the cusp of making a real safe harbor for the people of Montserrat, we are grateful for your initial and continuing interest in helping us to achieve this project. We look forward to a mutually beneficial and successful partnership and the delivery of our port on time and within budget. I'm, I'm compelled to add the 18 months. <laughs> <laughs> to our Premier, Honorable Joseph Taylor Farrell, for setting out the historic and economic context, along with the investment possibilities under which the project operates and who has supported our efforts as the Minister of Finance and Economic Management. Thank you, as it is your ministry that provides the fiduciary and procurement oversight function for this project. Thank you again, Premier, for your continued support. Your Excellency, Sarah Tucker, for your, your presence here today and sharing your thoughts with us. They be a testament to the UK's steadfast support for Montserrat. Thank you for your encouraging words and for drawing the line hard at 18 months. <laughs> <laughs> for the feature address delivered today, visioning the completion of a new jetty, we lockstep and join with your drive to deliver a fit for purpose facility and the Montserrat project. Thank you, Honorable Dr. Samuel Joseph. We extend thanks to the Cabinet and Legislative Assembly for your timely decision-making policy guidance and persuasive negotiations, making this project possible. Honorable Paul Lewis, leader of the opposition and former minister of communication works and works under whose watch the project was launched. You should be pleased to see today. Thank you, sir. We must thank our funding partners who for their commitment of some 35.3 million pounds, making this a most significant investment in Montserrat and sending a clear message 
that Montserrat has a future. The UK Government Foreign and Commonwealth Development Office with an initial 14.4 million pounds grant funding through the UK Caribbean Infrastructure Fund, UKCIF, followed by an additional 13.9 million pounds to, to a total of 28.3 million, allowing this project to be birthed. Dr. Harriet Stone, team leader, UKCIF. We are so very grateful for your role. Both you and your team played to secure the additional funding to secure the additional funding commitment from the UK, without which the project would have had to be abandoned. So thank you. To the European Union for the provision of seven million pounds in counterpart resources on the, the, the European Development Fund, EDF 11, we say thank you. These funds allow us, allowed us to dream of a facility that would satisfy our trade and access needs well into the future. They will continue to play a very important part as we navigate the various procurement hurdles in our path. Again, thank you. The Caribbean Development Bank, the implementing partner for this project under the UK CIF, without your strong lead, we could not have gotten here. I'd like to single out Mr. Andrew Dupini, Program Manager Infrastructure Partnerships, and Andy Gill, both who are, of whom, both of who are here with us today, along with Stephen Sandiford and the rest of this team at CDB, who have worked so closely with us, meeting every week on Wednesday at 2 p.m reviewing and advising on all documents and actions. Thank you. We are extremely grateful for the backstopping work of our engineering consultants at Stantec, Mr. Harold Westerman and his team. We remain grateful for all the priority work and effort that have been put into ensuring the signing of the contract for the designing and building of the new port infrastructure works. Sincere thanks to the Financial Secretary and the Ministry of Finance and Economic Development teams, your procurement unit and the project management office. The Ministry of Agriculture, Lands, Housing and the Environment, especially the Department of the Environment. The Attorney General's office, the Royal Montserrat Police Service, the DMC, and the Public Procurement Board, and the Social Services Department. I wish to thank some key stakeholders who have helped to shape the project. The Project Steering Committee, the Montserrat Fishing and Boaters Association, the Montserrat Association for Persons with Disabilities, Little Bay Business Owners, along with the owners of the land adjacent to the port, represented today by Mrs. Inez Daly Knights. We also acknowledge the input from the general public, those in the diaspora, and those in the diaspora, your participation in the consultation process for the environmental and social impact assessment was outstanding. I would be negligent if I did not acknowledge the tremendous contribution of my predecessor, Mrs. Beverly Menz, in guiding the project team and negotiations that initiated this project. Nor would it be right to leave out Mr. Rolando Cassi, who took on the early work of developing and coordinating the project. Thank you both. I wish to acknowledge the Herculean work of the project coordinator manager, Mr. Dion Weeks. 
Thank you for the grueling months of background work undertaken to get this project to this stage. Thanks is also extended to the project team members who had supported you along the journey. Glenroy Foster, Aldine Williams, and Dr. Sharon Burns, who recently joined, Ms. Renee Morgan at the legal department for your invaluable and high quality advice as we work through the contract negotiations. Ms. Hajinda Jutle for your support during the various procurement processes and Mr. Ralston Patterson, the Director of Public Works. Thank you all for organizing and preparing for today, the staff at MCWLE, led by Ms. Joycelyn Hogan. Thanks also to Ms. Verna Brand, our media partners, along with the whole, a whole long list of others who helped. Well done. I hope that meant I didn't leave out anybody. <laughs> <laughs> to Mr. Joseph Ogaro, manager of the Montserrat Port Authority, for so capably chairing this ceremony and for your expertise and continuing support. We say thank you. We are also grateful to your staff for assisting whenever it was needed to help move this project forward. Let us have a big round of applause and thanks for all those who helped to get us here. <laughs>